I was exhausted after the long drive to the hotel. It was already dark by the time I pulled into the parking lot. At first glance, the hotel looked charming. A sprawling old mansion converted into an inn, surrounded by lush gardens and tall oak trees. Inside, the lobby was all polished wood, with a granite fireplace and cozy leather chairs. It looked expensive, but I had found a good deal online for a room. The man at the front desk was friendly. He said they had upgraded me to their executive suite at no extra charge. I was surprised, but didn't ask questions. I took the room key and headed to the third floor. As soon as I opened the door, I noticed how cold it was. I could see my breath fogging up in the air. The windows were open, with snow blowing in. That's weird, I thought. I was sure I hadn't opened them. I shut the windows and cranked the heat to high, but it barely made a dent in the chill. Shivering, I climbed under the covers, still wearing my jeans and sweater. Some time past midnight, I woke up suddenly. The room was freezing again. I stumbled to the window, half asleep, and saw that it was wide open. Snow swirled outside. I know I had shut it before bed. What was going on? I double-checked the lock and returned to bed with a sinking feeling in my gut. A little while later, I woke again to a loud thump. It sounded like it was coming from the hall. I sat up, straining to hear any other noises. At first, nothing. Then footsteps, slow, steady shuffling footsteps, moving up and down the hall. My heartbeat quickened. Who could be wandering around this late at night? I cautiously opened the door. The hallway was empty, flickering shadows dancing across the carpeted floor in the dim emergency lights. The footsteps had stopped but all the doors lining the hall were ajar. That gave me chills. Something didn't feel right. I closed and locked my door before getting back into bed. I tossed and turned the rest of the night, unable to relax. The next morning, I headed to the front desk to ask about the footsteps. The man just smiled blandly. Old buildings make strange noises. Isn't that true? Not the answer I was hoping for. I decided to check out early. On my way through the lobby, I noticed a plaque on the wall, a memorial for guests who had died at the hotel. The list was shockingly long, going back decades. Many had died from falls or cold exposure. I felt the hairs on my neck stand up as I hurried outside. I knew I wouldn't be back. Over the next week, I tried to convince myself it was just lack of sleep playing tricks on me. But deep down, I couldn't escape the dark feeling that clung to me after that night. A month later, I saw a news article about the hotel. Another guest had died under mysterious circumstances found frozen on their balcony after apparently getting locked out of their room overnight. The photo with the article made my blood turn cold. It was the same room I had stayed in. After that, I started digging around online. The hotel's history was more sinister than I realized. It was full of unexplained deaths, accidents, even murders. Many locals considered it haunted and avoided it altogether. I'm convinced there are some evil forces lurking within those old walls that don't want visitors leaving alive. Call me crazy, but after my stay, I believe it. Whatever sinister presence is there, I'm grateful I made it out unharmed. But I'll certainly never go near that hotel again.
I had heard whisperings about the history of the old Grand Hotel when I first took a job there as a night clerk, but I dismissed them as small town rumors meant to spook outsiders. That turned out to be a naive mistake. On my first night shift, the manager showed me the ropes, then headed home, leaving me alone. Around 1 a.m., I heard footsteps overhead and assumed it was a guest. But then I remembered I was the only one currently checked in. The creaking footsteps continued intermittently. I called the night security guard, but he found nothing unusual in the empty rooms. Uneasy, I blamed the sounds on an old building settling. Over the next few weeks, I tried to ignore the strange occurrences during my shifts. Doors slamming shut on vacant floors. Faint voices murmuring in empty hallways. The same set of footsteps haunting the ceiling. I stopped calling the guard. What could he do about ghosts? I just kept my head down, doing my job. Until one night I saw her. I had just finished updating the guest log when a glowing white figure passed by the front desk, drifting silently down the hallway. I froze, heartbeat thundering in my ears. By the time I raced around the corner, the apparition had vanished. Now I couldn't deny something paranormal was happening here. Terrified, I decided to dig into the hotel's past. Newspapers on microfilm at the local library confirmed the rumors. Several guests had died over the past century under ambiguous circumstances at the Grand Hotel. Many died in their sleep with horrified expressions frozen on their faces. The most recent was a young woman who leapt to her death from the fifth floor in 1962. Witnesses claimed she was fleeing some unseen attacker. Even more ominous were the articles about the disappearance of a security guard in 1983. He was last seen making his rounds on the top floor when he vanished without a trace. No evidence of him ever turned up. When I read the guard's name, I broke into a cold sweat. It was the same man who worked here now. As I hurried back to the hotel that night, I almost plowed straight into the spectral woman, darting across the road. My heart stopped as I looked directly into her pale, contorted face. She opened her mouth in a silent scream before disappearing again. I ran inside, grabbed my bag, and quit on the spot. Driving away, I glanced back and witnessed all the curtained windows of the hotel blink open at once. Dark silhouettes watching me depart. I didn't stop driving until I reached the next state over. After some desperate internet searching, I discovered that the Grand Hotel had been built on sacred tribal burial grounds in the early 1800s. Construction crews unearthed hundreds of remains but ignored tribes' protests. Now, it seemed their spirits were forever trapped there, angry and confused. I decided then that ignoring the paranormal is dangerous. Some places have disturbing histories that leave dark residues. The Grand Hotel is one of them, eternally haunted by those who tragically lost their lives within its walls. Though I'll always regret taking that night clerk job, I learned one thing. Listen to ghost stories. Sometimes they save your life. When I applied for a front desk job at the historic Hollywood Hotel, I didn't give much thought to the haunted rumors. I don't believe in ghosts, so I figured it was just a gimmick to attract tourists. But that skepticism vanished a week into the job. It started with small oddities, 
like items gone missing from front desk drawers and then reappearing in bizarre spots. Or elevators stopping on the wrong floor for no reason, opening to an empty hallway. Guests mentioned hearing music and laughter from empty ballrooms late at night. I tried to find logical reasons for these things, but it was hard to deny the uneasy energy in that old building. Some spaces felt downright cold and malevolent. Even skeptical colleagues couldn't explain the strange events happening with increasing frequency. Then I saw my first ghostly figure. I was arranging brochures when a pale woman in a black gown strode silently past me into the grand ballroom. I followed after her, only to find the room vacant and freezing cold. Puzzled, I had maintenance check the XC system, but nothing was amiss. After that, I saw her often, drifting down hallways, peering from dark corners, walking straight through closed doors. The ghost had an anguished look on her face, like she was searching desperately for something. Researching the hotel's past yielded some clues. A beautiful young socialite had drowned herself in the pool in 1962 after her fiancé broke off their engagement. Photos matched her face. I started to pity her sad, residual spirit endlessly roaming these halls. But then other apparitions appeared. Glimpses of a man in a fine 1930s suit, a sobbing child near the stairs, and most chilling, a maid with dark bleeding wounds around her neck, floating behind guests in mirrors before vanishing. The final straw came late one night when the grand piano in the lobby began playing itself. A haunted melody filled the room as the keys moved on their own. My blood turned to ice. I hid in a closet, covering my ears, until the phantom concert ended. The next morning, I handed my boss my resignation, pleading for an immediate transfer. I didn't even go back to the room I kept on site. Too afraid I'd run into one of the hotel's tragic spectral residents again. I've since learned that the Hollywood Hotel has a disturbing history hidden beneath its glamour. Suicides, mob murders, affairs ending in violence. Some places attract evil energy that leaves an imprint long after death. But knowing the reasons doesn't make ghosts any less terrifying. I stick to new hotels now, where the ghosts of the past can't find me.